Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, it's going to be a good service for those of you that maybe have stayed over. Um, we'll actually say some things a little different today at uh, this particular service than the last, but it'll all uh, just go together, be the same type of a thought. So uh, wonderful to be with you during the Christmas holiday. And um, of course, our, our family is out here and not only pastors Mark and Amy and uh, family, but also uh, my in-laws, uh, Aaron's parents, uh, uh, Adrian and Lyndon Bohr, and then the family, it extends beyond that as well. So we're so glad to be here at this time. Um, wonderful to be around friends and family. And of course, we consider you to be friends and family family as well. Amen. And uh, just so glad to be here. I know the Lord wants to do some things. In fact, I'm sitting over there just literally seeing all this stuff. And, and so, praise the Lord, we'll get to it. Um, the first service, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say it the same as I did because it was just by inspiration of the Holy Ghost, but I'll just share this. The Lord spoke out uh, when I got into the pulpit in the first service, uh, just some words over your church in this region. Uh, and, and I heard the word weightiness and weight, and I just knew it was the weightiness and weight of God, the Holy Spirit, the glory of God. And uh, you'll, you'll begin to see some changes uh, that'll just begin to manifest even in this church, a weightiness and a presence, praise the Lord, you'll begin to recognize when you come into the room. There'll be those that'll come uh, that have never come before, that'll leave saying, I don't know what it was, but there's just something different. And you'll end up becoming carriers of this glory, amen. You'll recognize it, you'll know it, you'll be aware of it, You'll get in front of people. People will be drawn to you. When, when they get in front of you, there'll be something that'll come out of you that'll go into them. Amen? And will affect change. It's, I'm telling you, these last days before Jesus comes, great and mighty revelation will come not only to the hearts, but that revelation will go into people's lives. We're, we're, we're on the brink of seeing some amazing change. Now, this, I don't believe this is a result of God has a specific time frame to pour out his spirit. I'm, I'm not of that particular persuasion. I believe that, that he does pour out his spirit, but I believe there are individuals that will pray and will contend and will position themselves to be a conduit so God can actually flow and manifest himself. When Pastor Mark's talking about the prayer time, mm, so well, maybe I'm not a really good prayer. My mom was real fun. She was with us just recently at our home and went back to uh, my sister's in Cincinnati. And she was just saying, I just you know, go to pray in other tongues and I just can't last any more than about five minutes. But God does great things in those five minutes. Amen. And he answers my prayers. So whether you're someone that says, I don't know that I could pray for 30 minutes straight in other tongues or if I could just last for five minutes, give them five minutes in the midst of a environment of prayer and it won't be long until it'll catch you into a place where 15 minutes will go by and you go, oh my God, I just went 15 minutes. <laughs> and it'll become more of a hunger in you to want to connect with God in a greater degree. It's not about 15 minutes. Lord, I did 15 minutes today. What do I get? It's not about that. It'll become you connecting with him, sensing him. He becomes real to you and he's no longer just in a book. Amen. Yeah. I love this book because it lets me know I can hang out with a person. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Praise the Lord. Real quickly, um, you guys in the morning session, earlier session, kind of almost bought everything out. So we went and got our other box of our new book that just came out called Identity Crisis. So there's probably about 50 copies out there. This is about being made in the image and likeness of God. It's a really, really good, very easy read. And um, there's more to us than we know. Amen. God upped the ante. He created an Adam, and that became the Adam's family. <laughs> it went south really quick, and there were its and things in the family. He didn't send Jesus to be the second Adam. Because then that would said that God was actually okay with having a third. He sent him to be the last of the Adams. He's going to do away with the family. <laughs> he took the Adams family into the grave, and Jesus came out as the resurrected and glorified Christ. 
that as many as receive him, to them God gives power to become a brand new race of human beings, a new species that never had been created. God walked with the first Adam. He lives in the resurrected and glorified church. Hallelujah. Come on. How good is that? There's something different about us, and this book will help you with that. Uh, there's uh, one, this is the only copy left of Prayer Secrets back there. Some folks were asking about it, and there is one more flash drive out there. I actually had it. That's the reason why someone didn't get it, so sorry about that. That'll be back there as well. This is a special. We've got 10 counting this book left. We were doing two for 25 Normally it sells for $20. If you want to do an individual, we can do 15. But and I'm not trying to make deals up here. I'm just letting you know there's some good things out there. This is called the Miraculous Gospel of John. It's a commentary to the Gospel of John with, with the idea of helping you to see how Jesus thought about what he was doing before he did it. Why did he say that? What made him do that? Well, typically in religious circles, it's because he's the son of God and he has everything and he can just do anything. He came as the son of man. And he talked about himself, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as the son of man over 90 times. Emphasizing what? That I came as a man to show you what it looks like as a prototype of this new creation. You can do what I do. You can say what I say and get the same results. You can do what I do and get the same results. Because why? I'm coming to live inside of you. Amen? Amen. So that's what that's about. There's a few things back there. So thank you for, uh, for just letting me say those few thoughts to you. So, okay. Now turn over to Genesis. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray a little prayer. When I do, it's almost like, boom, the power of God will start working in people's bodies. Praise the Lord. We want people to be healed and set free. Whoo, glory. Hey, man, hey, man, hey, man. I know the power of God's going to go up and down people's spines right now and fix things. Hey, man, heal things. Start making uh, chiropractic corrections in your body. Some of you that have had pain, some of you that have pain in the neck. No, it's not your spouse sitting next to you. Praise the Lord. Some of you that have had pain, that pain's going to leave you right now. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. There's individuals in here, and I'm just getting this right now, that, that have had difficulty seeing. There's going to be clarity come to your physical eyes. Hallelujah. There's someone in here with ringing in the ears. It's going to stop in the next 10 minutes. You'll begin to hear perfectly clear. Amen. God's doing this right now. Amen. Amen. There's someone that's got a little tiny growth in your body that's disappearing right now as we speak. God wants to do these things. He wants to show himself. He wants you to believe and know that he's a God of power. Not just hear about it, but see it and experience it. Amen. He wants us to be just flat excited about him. Hard to get excited about someone you never see. Hard to get excited about hearing and hearing and hearing, but you never see that there's any doing. After a while, you get to thinking, maybe he just doesn't do what he says. Maybe it's not our dispensation. Maybe we need a move of God. Praise the Lord. Thank God for his movement. Thank God for his power. But he always has remained to be the God that he always was. He's never changed. It's just humanity that changes. We lose our direction. We lose our focus. But God has never lost his focus. And he always is who he's always been. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Someone who's had problems, you know, with uh, uh, the sciatic nerve and someone else who's having problems with uh, uh, circulation. The Lord's touching you right now. God's healing you. Amen. You can interrupt the service and just say, hey, I just got a healing. How many of you are right now already? You can tell the pain just disappeared. Who in here? You say, well, I, I don't know. I haven't checked. Hello. <laughs> right back there, you can tell pain disappeared. Praise the Lord. Where was the pain? All down through the neck. Amen. And it wasn't someone next to you. It was what God was. Yes. Yeah, see, the Lord wants to heal. Who else in here can already tell pains have disappeared. Symptoms have left. What about that person with the ring in the ear? Yes, way in the back. What's happened? You have to shout it out. Shoulder? Neck and shoulder. Thank God that's done. All right. Well, if the Lord will do those things for those couple, then he's doing that for all. Amen. Let that be an encouragement to you. Genesis? Amen. And we'll look right here. Chapter 1. How much of the chapter are you going to read? Or maybe the whole thing. <laughs> You're kidding. No. Amen. Okay, I want to pull out some words here, and you're going to get this. In the beginning, emphasis, God created the heavens and the earth. That word God means Elohim. 
When it's talking about God like that, this is another subject, but I'll throw it in. It means God the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, all three. Elohim, keep that in mind. We'll look at the next place it says God. And then God said, let there be light. And then God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. Notice each time it says God, it means Elohim. What does Elohim mean? The one true and only God. Don't need anyone else. I think we sang that in the song, didn't we? Didn't we sing that in that song? We don't need anyone else? Wow, that's an awesome statement. Now, stop for a moment and work with me. What if that were true? How would you do what you would do and what kind of choices would you make that were different if we didn't need anyone else? I'm not saying that to make you sad because possibly you've made a lot of choices that hasn't said that he's the one true and only God. I'm throwing that out for you to contemplate and think for a moment that in the day where there's so many options, so many distractions, it's easy to do everything else but God. Has he changed? Is he the Lord God I change not? Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, but always. Woo, always. Is he the same forever? Yes. Come on, you can sense in me there's a little different type of a, of, of, of a ministry gift in me. I'm all about urgency. I'm doing this to you. Amen. You feel, I feel like you're backing me into a corner. Good. That's exactly what I'm supposed to do is take away your options. That's my job, to remove everything from you until you're standing there going, well, the only thing I could choose then would be Jesus. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yes. And what would happen if you did? A cancer would disappear, but I'm going through treatments. Let's get it to go today. Yeah. Kill it for crying out loud. Drive it out of your body. Yeah. Someone was saying, I, don't, I, did, I didn't know this was going to be happening today at the service. <laughs> I don't know if I'm sure I, I'm glad I came. Come on, let's look a little further. It said, then God said, let there be a firmament. Then God said, or thus God made the firmament and divided the waters, which were under the firmament from the waters. And God called the firmament heaven. And so the evening and the morning, the second day, then God said, all Elohim, the one true and only God. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm making emphasis of what? The whole first chapter talks about Elohim. God called the dry land earth. God saw that it was good. God said, let the earth bring forth grass. And God saw that it was good. God said, let there be lights in the firmament. You can see I'm skipping through here, but if you follow me, you can just look for the word God. Then God made two great lights. God set them in the firmament, and God saw that it was good. God said, let the waters abound. So God created great sea creatures. God saw that it was good. God blessed them. Then God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. So God created man in his own image. God blessed them. God said, be fruitful. And then down to verse 31, and God, Elohim, the one true and only God, saw that everything that he had made, indeed, it was very good. Where are you going with this? You'll see here in the first four verses of the second chapter. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day, Elohim, God, ended his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then Elohim, God, blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which Elohim had created and made. Verse 4, this is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Who stuck that little Lord in there with Elohim? Because all of a sudden now I'm seeing something change, and that change is according to the law of what's called first mention. Anytime you see something mentioned first, there has to be significance. Why now is there another name associated with Elohim, the one true and only God? 
Everywhere I go, when I preach, all around the world, all around the United States, I don't see, and we talked about this this morning, the progression of greater and greater and greater confidence and boldness and assurity in the, in the people that possibly have been going to those places for year after year after year. And it doesn't necessarily mean that there aren't wonderful things being preached. It means that there's an opposition out there trying to take away from what you're receiving to dilute it and keep you from seeing that he's the one true and only God and you only need him. So the more options we have, the harder it is to make a choice that's all in. The easier it is to try this and try this and try this and try this and not until we get to the place where certain people say there's nothing else that we can do. I've had people look at me and say I've done everything that I, I, I can do and now I have to believe God like, like, like that's a bad thing. Oh my God, it's got to the end. I have to believe him now. <laughs> what if that was the first thing you were moved to something has to move you and here's the thought something is moving you is it the inspiration that comes from your relationship with God or is it the inspiration that comes through the world but something's moving you at all times. A friend of mine had this particular instance that took place. I thought it was very interesting. I'll try to tell this real quickly. He was driving his dog to a place where the dog would be trained because he lived on a ranch. And he was real sad because he doesn't really have any friends and um, his dog's his best friend, so he wasn't thinking about how fast he was going, wasn't even aware, and all of a sudden got pulled over. And so when the policeman came up to the window, you know, he rolled it, rolled it down a little bit, and he said, do you know how fast you're going? And he said, no, and I don't care. He said, you don't care? He said, no, I don't care. He said, well, you were going 97 in a 45. He said, do you care now? And he goes, no, I don't care. And he said, well, wh why don't you care? He goes, well, I thought I was on the highway. He said, that would be a 97 and a 70. <laughs> <laughs> Still not good. Why don't you care? And he said, well, I'm taking my dog to have, you know, my dog trained and I'm gonna be without her for two to three months. And he said, I'm sad and I'm not even thinking about it. I'm kind of in a melancholy mood. Do you know how much this would cost? He said, well, probably about $300. You know that I could take your truck? He said, you probably could. He said, do you care now? He goes, no, I don't care. He goes, I don't understand why you don't care. And then he said this. He said, well, it's pretty obvious that the guys want me to have a ticket. Now, in his world, the guys would be God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. He said, it's pretty, pretty obvious the guys want me to have a ticket. The policeman said, who else is in that truck with you? And he said, really? He said, it's a truck. You can see everybody. It's me in a chocolate lab. And he said, there's no way. He said, but you said the guys. He said, I know, I did. Is God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. He goes, oh, you can't talk about them like that. You can't call them guys. That's so disrespectful. He said, no, I, I, I beg to differ. He said, they're that real to me. It's like they're guys. We hang out together. We spend time together. And they got into this big discussion religiously, you know, theologically, whether you could talk about God as though he's real. And one thing led to the next, and the policeman looked at him and said, well, if he is that real, do you think it's possible he would heal my shoulder? He said, I can hardly lift it because of being at, you know, in the force all these years and some, some damage that came to my shoulder. Do you think he'd heal my shoulder? And he said, well, of course he would. He said, but you're going to have to do what I say. <laughs> he said, okay, what, what would I have to do? He said, well, then let me ask you a couple questions. The first is, are you sure that you have the right to pull me over? 
He said, well, my goodness, you're going 97 in a 45. He said, it's my duty to pull you over. He said, are you sure? He said, absolutely. What gives you that confidence? He said, the laws in Oklahoma give me that confidence. He says, I'm a police officer. And he said, the force stands behind me. Force. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't get over this thing. I said it in the morning service. I feel like right now I'm, I'm on a starship, you know, some battleship here, and I'm getting ready to... I want one of these. <laughs> I said in the early service, I didn't know this came out, and I saw, I saw the podium there in this little tiny space, and I thought, that is amazing that Pastor Mark can do all of his preaching in this little step. <laughs> hey, man, I wonder how he does it, and I thought, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And then all of a sudden, he stepped down and... Mm. Oh my gosh, the wonders of technology. Amen. <laughs> he said, are you sure? He said, absolutely. How sure are you? And he began to tell the reasons why he was sure. And this is what he said. Then with the same assurity and the same conviction in your soul, step back from the car, look up to heaven and say, would you please heal my shoulder? And immediately he stepped back and he said, my shoulder's really hurting, would you please heal? And he stopped right in the middle, he goes, oh my, my God. He said, it doesn't hurt. He said, lift it up. He said, I am. And he said, Pern and he's on the, on, the, on the side of the road and he's doing all this stuff going, oh my God, it's healed. He did, he healed my shoulder. <laughs> and he looked at my friend and he said, could you get out of the car, I need to give you a hug. And my friend said, I'm not getting out of the car, the truck. He said, no, really, I need to give you a hug. He said, we're on the side of the road and people are passing by. I'm not hugging you. He said, then could I shake your hand? And he shook his hand and he walked away saying, just slow down. He goes, my wife won't believe this. Oh my God, my shoulder's completely healed. My point is, look at the conviction he had in one area when he applied it to God. A connection was made. What is there, real quickly, about the Lord God? Why is it in there like that? Because if you look at the context, everything is finished. And what was the last thing that God did? He made whom? Man. How come he didn't reveal himself as the Lord God before he made man? Because there wasn't anything in the intelligence arena that could handle the revelation. He waited until man was made to give the revelation of the ages. I am Jehovah Elohim. Jehovah means I am the covenant keeping God who now shows you and reveals to you that I am the one true and only God. When did he wait for this revelation? A thousand years while man groped in the darkness trying to find the purpose for his life? Or did he immediately upon breathing life into Adam reveal to him, I am your daddy and I'm all you need? Amen. When our first child was born, Allie, while they were just doing some things with her and they gave me and I, went, I took her over into a little corner and I said, I am your daddy. And then I began to say all these things. I said, I'm going to love you. I'm going to make sure that you love Jesus. I'm going to watch over you. I'm going to make sure that your life is amazing. I'm going to provide for you. You'll have the best of everything. And then we got another girl, Drew. And I said, we're going to have the best of everything. And then we got a third girl, Chloe. I'm going to have the best of everything. And then I thought, I need another job. <laughs> I got to keep those promises, you know. But what did I want her to know? I wanted her to know the moment she came into this world, I am your daddy. God wanted you to know the moment you are saved, the moment you accept Christ, he wants you to know him. He wants to reveal himself to you. He wants you to see him. He wants you to feel him. When? Off in the blue yonder? No, right here. So what did he do with Jesus? He literally came inside of flesh so Jesus could walk around for 33 and a half years and mankind could see him, could touch him, could hear him. And John, the apostle said in 1 John chapter 1, we saw him, we heard him. 
We touched him and his joy that it was imparted to us. We want you to have the same joy. In other words, John is saying, you need to hear him. You need to touch him. You need to see him. This revelation right here, I am Jehovah Elohim, is the revelation of the ages. Jesus came as a demonstration of his Father so everyone could see, hear, and touch. You say, well, Jesus is gone, but he sent us a helper. And the helper's job is to reveal, transmit, show who Jesus is to us. He's the same God in this room right now, wanting to touch people. Hallelujah. Wanting to touch people. Guys, if you don't mind. (laughs) I have powers I didn't know I had. (laughs) This is going to be really interesting. When Pastor Amy read that testimony, the moment she read the part about snoring and God healed it, this is what I heard. I heard people in this room going, I wish that was me. I'm gonna drive that out of you right now. By God's wonderful grace and power, he is Jehovah Elohim, the one true and only God, and he wants to show up and reveal himself to you. He wants you to experience that if you've been dealing with that same thing, snoring, some of you, it may be more than others, and if it's the whole room, we'll be here for an hour. But if that's you, I heard people saying, I wish that would be me. It's gonna be right now. If that's you, come on up here to the front. We're gonna minister to you. There's a couple other things we're gonna do right before we're done. We're on a little bit of a time crunch here, so we can't do a whole lot. But the things we are gonna do, thank God, the Lord wants to touch you and heal you. Did I I make my thoughts clear enough, or was it fuzzy? Can you see that from the beginning, if God establishes something, he wants to see that particular principle or revelation all through the scriptures? Would God show up when people allowed him to be the God that shows up? What would happen if there were people like in his own hometown that didn't allow him to be the God that shows up? Amen? Can you see that when people open up their hearts to God, he's never changed? Just like I wanted to take my daughter and wanted her to know my voice, to feel my touch, to hear the sound, God wants you to hear him, feel him. He wants that kind of relationship with you. Is there anyone in here that would come forward and say, I want to get rid of this snoring? Come on down here right now. I mean, something good's getting ready to happen and you're really quiet. Is everybody doing okay? I'm just going to tap you on the forehead. It's not going to hurt you. I'm not going to sit there and smack anybody. Don't think like that. Just a little tap to the forehead. Aaron's going to come up here and minister with me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, we got a few more moments here. And then there's one other thing that God's going to do here. And then we'll just have a prayer for everyone. Pastor Mark will come back up. Wow, thank you, Lord. Wow, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, man, could you just step over and let her in here like that? Yeah, that's perfect. Ma'am, are you coming into this too? Go ahead and just step in here like that. There is a couple of spaces down here in case it's too crunched down here. There's more over here. Father, I just thank you right now according to what you showed me that these people will be set free and delivered. You are Jehovah Elohim. You made a covenant with us that cannot be broken, that you will show up Reveal yourself to us. Demonstrate that you're all we need. You're all we need. Every one of you, while I'm ministering to you, just have that thought going in your mind. Uh, He's all that I need. In the name, that's it right there. The fire of God touch you, set you free. Thank you, Lord. Right here, touch her. In the name, that's it right there. Be healed. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Right here, touch this. Jesus, uh, fire of God. 
touch you. In the name, fire of God, touch you today. In the name, fire of God, touch you. Amen. Jesus' name, touch you and set you free. In the name, fire of God, touch you. Thank you, Lord. In the name, fire of God, touch you. In the name, Jesus. That's it right there, ma'am. Woo, glory, glory, glory. Amen, amen, that's working. Jesus' name, be healed. Amen, right here in the fire of God, in Jesus' name, be healed, be healed. Thank you, Lord. Come on, everybody, lift your hands. Don't just spectate. Let's just thank the Lord for healing. Amen. It's okay that people fall. You say, well, you're hitting them in the head so hard, you're knocking them over. <laughs> if that's really what you think, that a tap in the forehead would knock someone over, you can think that if you'd like, but that's just the way that I see myself ministering to them. At least as Jesus did, I didn't spit in their eye. <laughs> I've had some people get all upset about a particular way of ministering and the people got healed and they couldn't see that they got healed. They were too caught up with you minister to them in a different way. One guy got mad because I was actually having fun while I was ministering and thought I was being disrespectful. I would rather have fun than be all serious. I would rather think that God is a God of lightness, that I'm not going to get to heaven and he's going to have a frown buried in his skull from thousands of eons of being mad at everybody. God doesn't need Botox in order to keep his frown from being revealed to everybody because he's not frowning. So don't get caught up on the method. Let's just thank God these people are being set free. Wow, thank you, Lord. Here it is in Jesus' name. In G that's it right there. In the name, thank you, Lord. Command that to come out in Jesus' name. Be loosed in the name. Be loosed in the that's it right there. Be loosed in the name. Thank you, Lord. Let's move you over here. Do you mind if I move you over here? Just keep on moving you over here. Just keep moving you over. There you go. Amen. Put your hands on her, Aaron. In the wonderful, that's it. Jesus' name, I command that to stop. Hallelujah. In the name, thank you, Lord, for that to stop. In the name, thank you, Lord, for that to stop. In the name, fire God. In the name, fire God. In the name, fire God. In the name, Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for healing her, setting her free. Are there some more people that came up, or are you the same ones? All right. You can have a seat. Real quickly, folks, anybody in here, stay here, Aaron, anybody in here, you've had any type of cancer, any type of cancer report, from the littlest of it to the bigness of it, any type of cancer report, let's, let's let God kill this cancer. Come on. Come, on. come on, let's let God kill this cancer. Anybody, come on up here. Come on up here. Come on, he's our life. That life that's in us. Jesus said, I came to give you life and life, how? Abundantly. abundantly. More abundantly. Amen. What does he mean by that? There's so much of an abundance of God's life in you, it'll come out of you. What did Jesus say? Out of your belly will flow the rivers of living water or life. That's Zoe. That's something now that's been imparted unto your spirit. Amen. 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 And it's in you for what? For the purpose of killing the, the darkness of Satan and sickness and disease. Can you say amen to that? Amen. So stretch your hands forward to these people right here. And no matter what the report is, we just speak death and release this life. Wow, put your hands on her right there. It'll set you free right there in Jesus' name. That whole cancer report, I command it to die. Amen. No more. Put your hand on her. In the name, no more. That's it right there. Jesus. Put your hand. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Put your hands on her. In the name. Put your hands on her. Jesus' name. Fire God on you, sir. That's it right there. Put your hands on her. It's going to die right here. Jesus' name. Right here. Someone else. Yep. Amen. Amen. Put, put your hands out. Put your hands in that hand. I can't put my hand in there if it's shaking. Stop that from shaking. Just be normal. Just relax. Just relax. Relax. Don't be tense. Just relax. No, just relax. No, now take that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. 
Hallelujah. Something went into you today. It's heaven's life. It's heaven's solution for this terrible thing. Wow, fire. Hapalahati Woo. Glory. Wow, thank you, Lord. Come on, just put your hands up right now. There's something in this room just beginning to fall on people. Hallelujah, Father, I thank you. Now, there's some of you maybe say, I don't understand all this. Don't, don't throw it away, okay? And I'm the traveling guy. Blame it all on me. Keep coming because you've got tremendous word, information, love, and the experience of God coming to you every week with Pastor Mark and Pastor Amy and those that are here to minister to you and your needs. Amen. I'm the traveling guy. Blame it on me. It's a little different. I'm not sure about this. Don't throw it away. God spoke this morning that this place will be a place, whoo, I can feel it right now, where the weightiness and the presence of his spirit will begin to manifest, and the glory of God will begin to be seen, and that presence of the Lord like smoke shall fall on people and shall get on you like a residue, and the presence of God will heal and deliver and set people free in greater numbers than has yet been. And it shall be a demonstration and a sign of God's presence and his approval of what's taking place in this ministry. And Father, we give you praise for these things you declare to these people to encourage their hearts, to cause them to see you and feel you and know you like never before. And it shall be in Jesus' name. Thanks for watching the Life Church YouTube channel. You can join us live right here on YouTube every Sunday morning at 9.30. If you enjoyed today's message, share it with a friend. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any Life Church videos. For more information about Life Church, check out lcboise.com. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.